Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at another new product. Uh, it's a laser projector ultra short throw from a company called Nexigo. The model is Aurora Pro. Uh, it's a new company, never heard of them before until I found them on uh, AVS forums. And they've been real, a lot of uh, good thing being said about this projector uh, since they had a Kickstarter and after that they've been continuing to produce and, and sell these products that I think it was released about two months back uh, and Mexico has been company they've been making different kind of projector but I think this is their first theater level projector with 4k uh, 3d and um, Dolby Vision HDR support so this is uh, actually my second unit I uh, purchased one uh, at launch with it to develop some noise issue so they sent me a replacement so last time I did not uh, do any unboxing as well as this was what it tries it out so this is my replacement unit I'm gonna unbox it and set it up and and show you guys how it looks and how it it so this is just the outer box so the good thing is that they double packed it see this is the main box of the projector just quite going heavy not gonna lie as you can see it's difficult to frame it it's upside down all right so I got it properly oriented and this is what the box looks like not much in terms on anything written on, on this top it's difficult to put on there uh, so it's, this box is just printed wrong way it's just printed upside down should have been this way around so you can actually read what's written on there unless I don't know if you guys can see that it's a do it support Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos so it has built-in speakers as well and there's some beta basic stuff vision. not a whole lot here so let's just unbox it and see Packed, nicely packed uh, instructions booklet uh, cleaning cloth quick start guide on how to set it up so that's one thing a lot of manufacturer nowadays skimp out is actually creating these booklets all everybody wants you to just go on on the website and get that I understand it's a cost saving method but I just feels a lot better to have something printed and especially like it's difficult to show on on video the quality of the paper and everything minor thing but uh, I, I think as far as the end user it makes, makes a lot of sense and I personally like it color printed instructions just to have it in a manual I have all the guides of how to set it up the projection size so it can support up to from 80 inch screen up to all the way to let me just focus on that up to 150 inch screen really nice and then you also have a cloth this is the remote that it comes with nice looking remote and another thing about this remote is since I've already used it I know uh, it's backlit as well which is another thing for some reason a lot of manufacturers skimp out on especially for things like it's a theater room uh, item it should always have a backlight because 99% of the people will be using in a low light situation where backlight will be be needed So 
So I'm glad it does not have any buttons like net, net flakes and things like that. Just makes it easy. Uh, I don't personally like those shortcuts. So because they just take extra space and a lot of time you end up just pressing it randomly and uh, when you're not mean to. So it's better just to have it that way. So this controls the basic functionality of the projector as well as has some built-in OS. It's based on Android OS, uh, but it's not full-flight Android uh, TV interface. So you can see that. So you can see it's black light. Pretty cool. All right, now the main item. Here's our projector. It's a heavy beast. Starting from the back side, I don't know if you guys can see it. Hopefully it focuses. So starting from the left, you have HDMI 1, 2, and 3. So 3 is designated as a game one, and first one is an eARC. If you're using, you're best connecting your room. theater uh, room, uh, AVR. What I have is basically I have everything connected to my NAS. Yamaha AVR and then I just display out to do this. I uh, hope it's focusing correctly. Go so moving further on you have the audio out, uh, toss link, RSPIDF, and lastly a LAN and a power. So not much is going on on this side. On the left side you have a USB connector. On the right side, sorry, okay. As you can see it has one USB, three, and then you have these toggles for the feet to align the projector. That's one of the things that you'll find out when laser projector is. It's quite tricky aligning it and making sure that it's, it sits level uh, with the screen. I have a lot of issues, especially with my previous two projectors. But once you set it up, it, it's you just set it up and forget it basically hopefully unless you have to move it uh, on the front side you have three leds uh, lights they basically stay off uh, during the playback and you can enable it to when on your standby these basically light up it as light light white or light blue color and there's nothing on there on the other side only a feature adjustment and on the top, oops, sorry about that. This is what the projector looks like. You got the power button, you got the laser light, and your main. These are the speaker grills. So let me just take it out from here and show you guys a closer view. So these are the speaker grills. It support Atmos. Personally, I'm not a big fan of built-in speakers, uh, but they do a decent job if you don't have a theater system connected. So you can see Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. It's a 4K projector made by Nexigo. And here you have the laser, and you have on the side for because it supports 3D as well, so 3D emitter built-in on the side, and also a light sensor. And you have 
got some some wins for for here. Now I'm a fan. All right. So first time you boot up your projector, it will ask you to sync your remote. So like I was showing you earlier, this is the remote. You can see it's backlit. So it's asking us to to simultaneously press return and menu button. So what you're gonna do is that's your return button and that's your menu button. You're gonna hold these and it's gonna start searching for the remote. And as you can see, it's found the remote. It's connected. Go on next. I'm gonna set it up. Asking for a Wi-Fi. Gonna connect to mine. So once the Wi-Fi is connected, it asks you, do you have a wall projecting? What kind of social method you have? So I'll go with the projector screen since my projector is just sitting under the screen itself. Uh, image instruction, it basically guides you how to set up your screen as well as a projector. Make sure it's in line. As you can see, I've kind of not 100%, but it's close enough that I don't want to mess with it because just then it just takes a little more time for having to set up. So make sure you go through this instruction and set it up accordingly. Similarly, it asks you on, to, on focusing setup as well. Once you set it up, make sure that everything is in focus and lines are straight. Uh, you can also utilize, let's just go with it. Basic key stoning, but I highly recommend not to do that. So let's see once this boots up. I don't want to set it up with Alaska, but if you want, you can do that. Terms of use, okay, advertising, I want to accept that. So here's the basic interface of uh, the Nexi Gorilla Pro. As you can see, it, it looks similar to what we have uh, as an Android TV, but it's not a full flight Android TV, but it does have some apps already built in. You got Netflix, Amazon Prime, and some other uh, application, Flex, Cloudy, I don't know what this, this is. Uh, some other Disney Plus. So all the main ones are covered, I think. Uh, but I personally use uh, NVIDIA Shield Pro 2019 and that's been my go-to player uh, since forever and that's what I'll continue to use with this as well. Go to apps. And different category of apps you have. So as you can see, there's a whole list of, of apps that are there. So I think for an any average person, most of them are, are covered if you don't want to connect a separate device. Here your news as well. I also got some Indian news as well. Interesting. You got your Spotify here as well. If anybody wants to listen to music. So right now if you can hear I'm actually connected through the speakers. They're, they're decent, uh, so if you don't have anything else, you can utilize them. Settings, you got your network setting, Bluetooth setting if you want to pair a uh, headset or something else or Bluetooth speakers, display, audio, here you can set the touch one that you're being hearing right now, audio mode, cinema standard, Dolby cinema, cinemas, I just keep it standard, I don't use much, Dolby, <coughs> and here you can do output to headphones, if you have Bluetooth headphones connected, or you can do HDM eARC, SPIFD, or speakers, I just keep it as speakers because when my home audio theater is connected, Yamaha, uh, basically all everything goes through that, right now it's turned off. Input sort select, you have your HDMIs and USB. And you have drone setting version I'm on right now. Firmware version 1.0.117. I know there's uh, some beta updates that, that came by uh, and that I had to do for my previous were, uh, 
projector so i'm going to plug in my usb uh, on that update and see if that still valid on this uh, to do that you'll come into this update by usb and 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 do that ir motion detection so basically what it does is that if you get close to the laser it will automatically turn it off uh, to prevent that uh, i usually turn it off because it's just very annoying anytime somebody walks by it will it will turn off and you have to press a button in order for it to do that send my light effect uh, so basically what happens is if you turn it on then whenever the project is off you'll see that blue lights up front uh, that light up that shows that basically it has standby if you turn it off then basically there's nothing to show i like to keep it and on so that way i know even if uh, my receiver is off there's nothing is playing on there and the screen is or basically the project is turned off because there's been times where everything was off and project was still on i did not notice it because the lights were on or off so sleep uh, i think there's a bug with that i personally do not use it because the problem is that it, it, no matter what time you turn it on if like let's say if i put it on one hour uh, in case, uh, if, even if I'm watching a video, it will automatically start to turn off it at one hour. So it's not like that there's, when there's no signal, it will automatically turn off. I've already raised that to next ago and they, hopefully they'll fix, fix it in, in, in the next firmware upgrade. Because right now it's, it's useless, so I just keep it off. Time format is 24 hours and 12 hours. I prefer 12 hours. Zone selection. It's Eastern, I'm in Central. I'll do that. Language, unknown source. If you want to install something else, I don't want plan on installing any application on this, so I'll keep it like that. And here's where you do refactory reset. I highly recommend that. As every time you do a firmware upgrade, make sure you refactory reset. I know it takes some time for you to reset everything and and reset up, but it's just avoids all all the bugs. So that's journal error cast. If you want to cast something from your phone or anything to this device, you can do that. Uh, I personally do not do use that because if I want to stream anything, it'll just go to my uh, NVIDIA Shield and I'll just do that. All right, the, now the main thing, display. So you have multiple modes, standard, brightness, uh, and brightest. I keep it a standard because I have a, a light control room. So as you can see, everything is dark, so I don't need the brightest setting on that. Image parameter here where you come in and set up uh, whatever you like your custom settings to be. So I use custom. I have a, a really good settings that I got from one of the users at AVS uh, forum that he's been testing out. He's one of the, the best uh, home theater person that I know of. Uh, so I'll plug in these settings once I do uh, out of the box. Cinema Pro, uh, I found Cinema Home or Cinema Pro, depending on the content, looks really good. You can see that. Keystone correction here, if you have things that are looking out of, uh, they're not straight, you can come in and, and do this four point or eight point connections. Like for example, if I see that uh, my top right is going out, I can, I can do a little bit. Personally, I do not recommend that. It's better to do it man uh, just moving around the, because anytime you do that, uh, it basically impacts your your uh, picture quality as well as your gaming uh, response time is affected as well. And and basically, if I remember correctly, this is uh, when you have gaming mode enabled, it will not allow this because it takes uh, away from that. Uh, important thing is focus, as you can see. On this one, my right focus is still a little bit out left is clear so i'm gonna do a little bit try to get everything in focus so now my left side is getting blurry and right side is even getting even worse so ideally you you want everything to be in perfectly focused which I've seen it's not always the case so go with the best possible uh, with uniform uh, across the screen that you can make so I think that should be good enough MEMC uh, basically it's I don't know I, I keep it off 
in your projection level screen size so there's a Dolby Vision I have 120 inch screen uh, because as per next ego based on the settings that you provide here it will impact how tone mapping is done for uh, your projector not sure about the hundred percent about the screen screen gain but uh, I think mine is 108 so that's that's how I use screen uh, you can choose boot source so every time you boot up it will automatically go to HDMI if you don't do that it will just come into the screen that you saw earlier so I keep it on HDMI 1 because that's where I'm at image size and position don't mess with that and that's about it so one final thing I'm going to do is basically do the firmware upgrade. So let me just show you guys real quick as well. So there's a USB on the right side of the projector. I had the firmware downloaded. You'll receive an email from Nexigo once the firmware upgrade uh, is available. Right now they are doing this offline upgrade, but in future they plan to do an OT update. So basically it will automate you will receive it a notification right here and you can update it from there. But right now I'm going to do a USB since it's a beta firmware. As you can see, just looking for firmware. And you can see the, the other lights that when in standby mode. And the number projector is booting up. on the firmware I'm gonna pause the video for here for it to complete that's probably gonna take a few minutes all right the firmware upgrade has completed now so the system is booting up it's a pretty nice supply screen and you can see 4k triple color Ultra short through lethal protection. And as you can see, so I sent uh, the boot as HDMI one. It automatically went to HDMI one. Unfortunately, my thing is turned on on HDMI one. That's why you don't see any signal. There you go. So the mobile device is affected, but <clears throat> this is because I was using it to update the firmware. Uh, but I don't want to do that right now. So just basic pressing on this particular button right here. You get this menu, source image. You can set up your image parameters, input, white balance, Dolby audio. I'll just do it off since I'm not using projector. You got the HDMI setting, HDMI version. That is something that should you should definitely come in and change as soon as possible which is just slow down a bit. This thing right here, change it to EDI 2.1. So you get the full benefit of the HDR and everything. Take a while. There we go, RGB range. I keep it automatic, but if you're not using computer, just use it limited for right now. PG range is going to be limited. Kiosk for correction, focusing. Again, you have the same screen that we were using earlier to focus. I notice that my focus is still out on the left side, so I will have to play with it a little bit to get perfectly focusing. But I'm currently seeing that compared to my previous projector. Uh, this one is not as good on focus but another thing is basically 
I recommend that let the project run for at least half an hour before you change the focusing because I've noticed that that impacts it as well. So I'm not really concerned right now. I'm going to let it run, I'll play something, and then after a little while, I'll come back and, and try to fix the focus. So again, if you want to go back, uh, here's just some of the settings. It goes, takes you to main main setting page, which is the second button right here. Look on top, you got the HDMI inputs. You can also make it as a mouse right there. And so that's it for, for now. Uh, I'm going to do another video of setting out of the colors uh, and based on the, I was uh, telling the ABS <coughs> forum settings that I have, uh, the image parameters set up for HDR and uh, and for regular uh, content, SDR, HDR, 3D. Uh, we'll look into that as well. So right now it's just running from my NVIDIA Shield. Uh, thank you guys. Hope you liked my video. Uh, please like, subscribe, share. Uh, so I, if I get feedback, I will continue making these videos as it takes quite a bit of time for me to do this as well. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Bye.